Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while and honestly I'm still recovering from a cold, but I am determined to get another video out for you today. Quick life update for anybody who's curious from my last video that I posted about getting my eye surgery. They have healed fantastically. I can see 2020. I have had no problems. My doctor has been very happy um, in all my follow-up appointments and it has been amazing. Another thing is that as you may be able to tell from the cards behind me here on the bookshelf, my partner and I got engaged. Ah! So that's um, a really big thing on the horizon for us for the next like a uh, year or so that uh, we're obviously going to have to start saving up for and it's going to be really fun. Yay! But aside from all of that, I'm going to kick it off by going right into another archaeology video. Some of the information in this is obviously a bit out of date because it's been about just over 10 years since I began studying archaeology so obviously some of this stuff is different now but I think that a lot of the stuff that I went through is still relevant students that are looking to do archaeology at university so I'm gonna do this video anyway I started off originally filming a video where I reviewed all four years of my degree in one video and then it went on way too long and was so difficult to edit and I felt like I was just missing out on a lot of stuff. I also didn't have some information that I wanted to have when I was speaking about the video, namely all the courses that I attended. And in the intervening time between when I filmed that one and this one, I actually found a list of my courses and my grades, which will remain confidential. So I'm actually able to talk a little bit more in depth to you about what the kind of courses that I was doing. So the school that I went to for my undergraduate degree was Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. I looked at a couple different schools. I think I also looked at Western University, which is in London, Ontario, and as well either University of Guelph or the University of Toronto with some classics programs. But the Laurier de degree program ultimately I chose because it allowed me to specialize in Near Eastern archaeology and it had field opportunities in the Kingdom of Jordan and I was really interested in having that experience. I will say that it has changed since the time that I was there. Not necessarily in a bad way, but they've restructured the program so it's not going to be exactly identical to the experiences I had. And some of the staff have obviously like retired or moved on. The first year of university um, is obviously I think going to be a shock for a lot of people because it's your first time being away from home, um, being away from your parents and it can be an adjustment for some people. Personally, I loved it. I was really eager for the independence that it afforded you. However, at the same time, with a lot of first year university students, I wasn't what I would consider to be like completely independent in that I was living in a dorm, so obviously I had access to like a food hall, places where um, food was cooked for me. I could cook food on my own, but I was in one of those residence halls where it's like, you know, 20 girls on one floor with one kitchen and um, like common room. Course wise, I did five courses a semester uh, and this and they were divided and they had different class times um, during the week. So I know I definitely had one or two that were like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. I had at least one nighttime class. So the class started at seven o'clock and ended at about 9.30. And then I had a couple more spaced out in um, the afternoon and at least one that began at like eight o'clock in the morning, which uh, I did not enjoy getting up for. The first semester, I'm just gonna read out to you the different courses that I took. I had Archaeology 101, which is Archaeology and Introduction. I had Classics 102, Roman Civilization, Near Eastern 101, which was First Civilizations, and this covered Egypt and Mesopotamia and then Near Eastern 111, which is Introduction to Biblical Hebrew, and then Religion and Culture 104, which is Evil and Its Symbols. So obviously those first four courses were all required as a part of my degree, and then that last one as a religions course, it's a different department, that was an elective that I did, and to be honest, I don't really remember that one much. As far as all of these courses went, I actually did really well and I found the first semester to be a bit of a breeze for the first three. So Archaeology 101, Roman Civilizations, and Near Eastern Civilizations because, or sorry, and First Civilizations because I'd already kind of studied a lot of that stuff in high school. So I had taken a high school class that was all about ancient civilizations. So we covered Egypt, a little bit of Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome. I was also very interested in that in my personal life. So I had read a lot of books and stuff about that. So I felt a lot of the, those two, the Roman civilizations and the Near Eastern course were kind of an overview for me rather than learning everything from scratch. AR 101 was really great in that it kind of introduced you to a lot of archeological concepts. 
He, the teacher actually also talked a lot about jobs that people with archaeology degrees from the school went on to do. The religions cl class, like I said, I don't really remember much. The hardest class by far and the and the most intense part of my first year was Introduction to Biblical Hebrew. Part of my degree program required a language component, which is actually quite common for a lot of archaeology degrees. Some some of them will require to, you to learn like a romance language or literary language or academic language, so French, Italian, or German, and some of them obviously require you to um, learn an ancient or dead language. Now I had taken French uh, as a Canadian when I was growing up in school and I did not do well at it. As soon as I could stop taking French classes and they weren't required anymore, I did. And I kind of wish I had stuck through it because I think it would have made it a lot easier when I did Hebrew. And the biggest thing about Hebrew is not only that it's a completely different language, but it's also a completely new alphabet that you have to learn as well. <laughs> the class itself, I think, scared off a lot of people and how a lot of people drop out the first semester. The way that the professor ran it kind of weeded out the chaff and it really focused in on the serious uh, students of the first semester, really. The professor basically walked into the first class and said, this is introduction to biblical Hebrew. We're gonna be moving at a very fast pace in this class. So if you're not willing to do the work, to learn and keep up with everything, then you might as well just drop the course now. We're gonna cover this, this class. You need to have all everything that we've done today memorized because next class you're gonna be moving on to the next part of the curriculum and so on and so forth. Every Monday we have a, qu a quiz on everything that we've previously covered covered in the class and if you start failing the quizzes you know drop out if you fail the midterm you just drop out because you're not going to pass the exam etc etc if you don't pass this class in, in itself you obviously can't go on to do the second semester part of it so he was just really frank and upfront with us about like you can't slack off in this class so that itself on your kind of first day of university was a bit of a shock not that I wasn't expecting to have to work hard but that was a that was pretty intense and I, I will say that it was not easy I had to really cram really hard I don't have a natural talent for languages I realize now that the thing that I struggled with the most was going from English, which is a non-gendered language, to a gendered language like Hebrew, where things are masculine, feminine, or neuter. And I there's just this whole compo extra component to it where you have to intrinsically know if something is going to be masculine or feminine, and then you have to build the whole sentence and the grammar around that. So I really struggled with that. I think I passed the midterm by about 0.5 of a mark. So I passed it. And I kept the class and then when the um, exam came around I just studied my butt off because there was both an oral and a written part of the exams so you had a couple lines you, that you had to memorize and then he would point at one of them and you would have to speak it and then you had like a written part of the exam and luckily for us the professor while very intense provided us with a lot of material for practicing especially for the exam he provided us with like either previous or like mock-up exams that were similar in style to the one that we'd be doing so i think i did the mock-up like at least five times and then when i came to the exam everything was in a similar style but obviously with different wordings so that really helped me and obviously how well i did my exam really bumped my mark and i was able to go on into the second semester so after first semester was a bit of a breeze for me except for hebrew i then went on to my second semester starting in January 2009 we had archaeology 102 which was methods theory and practice classics 101 which is the Greek world Near Eastern 102 epic myth and poetry Near Eastern 112 which was introduction to biblical Hebrew part 2 and then religion and culture 103 which was love and its myth so again four classes that I needed to take as a part of my degree and then one elective class that I chose to take at the religion and culture department introduction to biblical Hebrew we went from learning everything about the language and grammatical structure to then translating the Hebrew Bible so the way that that class worked was we each had a copy of the Old Testament in Hebrew and I think he had us pre pre-do stuff but we were going through it line by line and transliterating it and then translating it for those of you who haven't done anything with languages transliterating is where you are literally translating each individual word and then translating it is where you actually take those words and make them into a sentence that makes sense in English because obviously different languages have different grammatical structures and they don't tend to translate 
um, exactly into perfect English. So that actually I quite enjoyed. Still remember my first couple lines and still say it if I'm gonna, if I, if I just think about it. So the first line that we would have translated is the first uh, line of the Bible, which is Bereshith bara Elohim which is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So that's my uh, that's my little Hebrew party trick that I still have. <laughs> Other classes I took, theory, methods, and practice of archaeology was again it was a great class. It was also went from being a fairly easyish class to a really intimidating class because there was a requirement at the end of it for a 15-page essay, which to all of us was like, oh my god, that's so much. How am I going to fill that whole paper? And I now having written a master's thesis and all these reports and stuff for work, I look back and I laugh at that. We had a lab component to that where they started introducing to us a lot of the different concepts that we use in archaeology. So things like map reading, doing section drawings, uh, those are the two that kind of come to mind that I very much remember because they had a big tree and like all its roots and an archaeological deposits draw painted on the wall of the lab. So we would have to do like section drawings of that. And the exam itself was really cool because I would just remember we he basically put a plan of a Roman villa on the on a projector and then you had um, like lists of different um, objects that were found in each of the rooms and then you had to answer questions and interpret what you think might be happening in this particular room based upon where it is in the whole overall plan of what kind of finds were in it etc cetera, etc cetera, which was a really interesting way of um, taking your kind of theory that you learn and then putting it into practice without actually being in the field. The 15 page paper itself didn't turn out to be as bad as I thought it would be. He, The professor pretty much wanted us to take two archaeological sites and then compare and contrast them in a report. So I don't remember... I don't remember both sites that I did, but I definitely did one by Flinders Petrie in Egypt, who is the grandfather of Egyptology, which was uh, pretty cool. I liked doing that. The Epic Myth and Poetry class was one of those classes that I still talk about to this day and I really enjoy because it was just fun. Like, if you are looking for a good laugh, I would highly recommend reading some Epic Myth and Poetry from Egypt and Mesopotamia because that is... That stuff is weird. It is, uh, it was interesting, especially because they, they had like a belief in magic, not the same that we have today, but they have all these things of like spells and stuff to make people fall in love with them that we were reading about, a lot of which involved some very graphic content and a lot of poo, which was interesting to read about. Actually one of my favorite poems of all time I found in that class. Quite long, but the part that I like the best of it would be is, if only I were her little seal ring, the keeper of her finger, I would see her each and every day. I would be the one who stole her heart. Quite above this, um, there is some bits that are a bit, mm, but that is probably one of my favorite lines of poetry that I've ever, ever read. Again, this course, uh, the exam of it was quite interesting. The professor that ran it was our Hebrew professor and he was quite an eccentric guy and he, he liked to have a little bit of fun. So the exam itself, there was a lot of, um, you know, recreate this type of poetry or um you know what does this what kind of style is this text and then the last question i'll never forget was imagine your ideal romantic partner and now put yourself in their shoes and write yourself some mesopotamian love poetry uh, so you basically had to write yourself a love poem using like the styles and imagery from the text that we were reading So uh, that was quite fun. I, I don't remember the poem and I don't have the exam But I do remember there was at least one bit where I wrote about how I had really nice ankles uh, Which is a theme that you do find in Mesopotamian love poetry <laughs> During my first year, I was also really keen to ingratiate myself with my professors, so I spent quite a bit of time in the labs that they have at the university washing pottery for our like senior Near Eastern professors. My religion and culture class that I took, again, I don't remember much of, but I remember, except for the fact that it was at 8 o'clock in the morning in, uh, in a giant converted primary school. And the classroom was what used to be the gym and it still smelled like socks. I just, it just smelled like gym, which was ugh, not, not my favorite. Things I remember from that class, that was the first time I ever heard of the poet Rumi and his works. We had to read a lot of stuff about him. I also think I wrote a class, a paper in that class about uh, Twilight because 
as a uh, millennial who was uh, like 16, 17, 18 when those books were coming out, I had a real thing for Twilight uh, in that phase of my life and it's not exactly the one that I'm necessarily proud of. <laughs> I didn't do any field work that year because it wasn't on offer that year. They were doing like a, a, a year off. Usually up, up till then they had done every single summer but then they were skipping it so won't be coming around to my uh, first year at field school until the end of second year. So I think this is a good place to kind of just kind of break things out a little bit. Uh, I'm not really trying to drag this out. There's just so much information to kind of fit in that I feel like if I made it all into one video, it would end up being an hour long and I don't think people really want to watch that. Um, I'm trying to get my videos to be not half hour uh, long things anymore, but uh, I haven't been as successful. So I'm really, really trying to keep it under like the 25, if I can, 20 minute mark today. My first year of university was probably, it was one of my best years. Fair, I look back on my time at my undergrad with such rose tinted glasses, it's unbelievable. There were definitely things that I went through in first year that I didn't like. You know, it is an adjustment to going into living with your family, to living with a roommate. I was in one of those dorm rooms where you had kind of a bed at either side of the room and then closets, but you still were sharing a room and a space with another person. Luckily, my roommate and I got on pretty well, but uh, that in itself was an adjustment, you know, not seeing my parents every day, having to look after my own diet to make sure that I wasn't gonna, you know, get scurvy. I uh, made a lot of friends my first year. I, as I think I've said before, before, I really felt like when I got into my first year classes and I started socializing with people after the first couple weeks I felt like I have found my people which is something that I still um, feel like today you know, I still keep in touch with quite a few people from my university my four years at Laurier and it's always really nice to meet up with them and see how we've all progressed and where we've gone after we spent our time at university I think an inordinately high amount of us go on into fu future careers in archaeology I either with PhDs into museums or commercial archaeology like myself and I really think a lot of that has to do with the experience that we had at Laurier, how supportive the staff were and everything and the first year is really the foundation for that. Obviously I'm not saying that you won't have that experience if you don't go to Laurier. Laurier was obviously the perfect choice for me, that doesn't mean it's going to be the perfect choice for you obviously, it depends on where you are and but I would just encourage you to really research the program and the courses that they are offering to make sure it's in line with what you actually want to learn. If you guys liked this and you'd like me to continue talking about what kind of things I did and uh, what kind of things I studied into my second, third, and fourth years, please let me know down in the comments. I am also planning on doing a bigger bookshelf tour of my books because that's another part of my life that I really love and I love to share with people is how much I love reading. I like really like recommending books to people. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please check out the rest of the content on my channel and subscribe. I know, like I said, I've got a wedding to plan now, but I'm hoping that I can be a bit more strict um, with my video schedule and get back onto the bandwagon a bit, although I think I've said that like six times already, so I don't know, it's anybody's guess. <laughs> I'm just trying to be honest with you. Um, thank you so much, guys, for watching today, and I'll see you next time. Bye!